Like many of you watching, I go to school. And I think that the majority of people can agree, school is usually a relatively boring place. But there's a major thing that could help prevent boredom. As long as you're done with your work, that is. Online browser games. Or to be more specific, cool math games. A website that seems to have been around since the beginning of time. There are so many people that seem to share this nostalgia for the website, and I think the answer is pretty obvious as to why, but that'll be discussed later. In this video, I'm gonna revisit some of my favorite cool math games I've played over the years, as well as some newer games that I think you should try today. I mean, I kinda can't because Cool Math Games is blocked with my school Wi-Fi, but who knows, maybe you guys can enjoy it. Run is easily the most popular series on the whole site. The first game has you running through space and platforming to avoid falling out of the map. You could jump on either of the walls around you, and it rotates the entire map to your liking. This is a super cool concept for a game. And because each of the levels are so short, it makes it extremely accessible to play for both short bursts as well as hours on end. The levels start on the easier side of things, but they gradually get harder over time, and lead to a decently challenging game. As for the second game, it's unfortunately not available at the moment, as it's the one game in the main trilogy that seems to still use Flash. Yeah, I might want to talk about that. When Adobe shut down Flash at the end of 2020, everyone was concerned about cool math games, but luckily for them, most of their games were made in HTML5, and not in Flash. So cool math games was fine, for the most part. The run games, however, were all made in Flash. Fortunately though, the games were ported to HTML5, and the series lives on. But I guess they're just updating it because Run 2 is not there. Run 2 took what the first game did and made it longer and more advanced. The levels have noticeably less ground to stand on and focus more on the platforming. And obviously, the best method of movement is to not run. There's a character that has roller skates, and they make the game play at a much faster pace, with the trade-off being that the controls are much more slippery. Run 2 is also pretty unique with the level design, and and serves as a competent sequel to the original. Run 3 is the most expansive game in the trilogy. By taking everything 1 and 2 set up and fully realizing the concepts, there's more running, there's more jumping, and more running. To distance itself from Run 2, while the game still provides a lot of focus on platforming, the map design in Run 3 is a lot more comparable to the first game than the second. In this game, a new platform type is introduced. The Falling Platform. The idea is pretty easy to grasp. You can get away with touching it once, maybe twice in quick succession, but after it falls, it's no longer there. There's some pretty cool levels where there's a line of falling platforms, and if you touch one, it causes an entire chain reaction, and all the falling platforms in a whole level are gone, and leave nothing but more space to fall through. Later on in the game, you get to play as this lizard guy. Now you might think the lizard guy is this game's version of baby mode, except he doesn't make the game any easier, just much, much slower. He's the polar opposite of the unnamed skating character. As the gimmick with this guy is that he's really, really slow, but he can jump way higher than the other two. I hate Lizard Guy. All my homies hate Lizard Guy. But, whatever. Using him isn't required anywhere in the game, so I'll just stick to my super fast skating, man. All in all, the run series as a whole is pretty good. Definitely a fun way to spend a couple minutes. Another classic series of games is Fireboy and Water Girl. These games follow Fireboy and Water Girl, who would have guessed, as they go through various puzzles involving fire, water, and physics. There are six of these games, all of which have different themes, like light, fantasy, and ice. The levels were designed with two players in mind, so if you want to get a max score, you need to move both characters simultaneously. This isn't something you could really do when you're playing on your own. And if you do try to play it on your own, it often feels really annoying. All in all, these games are actually pretty fun. The difficulty progression is a bit more sudden than in Run, but it's a completely different genre, so obviously it'll have differences. Duck Life is another one of those games everyone's at least familiar with. In this game, you get a duck, and train it to become the best racer of all time. You do this by playing three whole mini-games. For running, you need to dodge barrels and jump by clicking. You need to collect coins, and when you do that, your running stat increases. To improve swimming, you need to dodge obstacles while diving and jumping to collect coins. 
And for flying, you have to fly up and down, collecting as many coins as you can, before you inevitably fall and die. And then, after playing the same three minigames for eight whole hours, you're finally ready to enter your duck in a race. Okay, duck, we've been playing the same three minigames all week just to prepare you for this race. You better not mess this up, or I'm putting you up for adoption and never talking to you again. Cool Math Games without a doubt has a lot of classics under its belt, but no one ever talks about the newer catalog of games. Are they any good, or did Cool Math Games fall off? Let's take a look at some of these modern games to see if they can even compare with the classics. Ovo is one of the more recent games I've played. It's a platformer where you play as a man with a donut for a head and you run around in a monochrome world, which kinda reminds me of sketches on paper. While simple in concept, there are a lot of mechanics in this game. You can wall jump, slide, slide jump, ground pound, high jump, wall climb jump, and even dive. Now that's a lot to keep track of for a 2D platformer, but luckily the tutorials are intuitive and easy to understand, so you can pick up on most of these concepts rather quickly. After the tutorials though, the game gets surprisingly hard. In the very first actual level, you need to remember pretty much every mechanic you've learned, which is, again, quite a lot. The second level only introduces even more mechanics. Still though, if you can get good enough at the game, it can be a ton of fun. I actually really recommend this game. It's good. A game I found while I was working on this video is simply called Scribble. In this game, you need to draw lines and move a ball of paper into the garbage can. And you aren't limited to just one line either. So there's a pretty low amount of creativity involved with how to approach each level. In later levels, two mechanics are introduced. In level 3, a red ball is introduced that can automatically delete everything it touches. This forces you to think around the red ball, or else you'll lose your path. And there's also a blue ball. These can interact with the blue boxes, preventing you from beating the level. You have to navigate these levels in a way to make the blue ball unlock the exit, and then the white ball goes in the garbage can to unlock the The game gets pretty boring early on though, but it's still pretty fun nonetheless. There's also something else I noticed. The game doesn't get rid of your ability to draw after you press the start button, so it allows you to do... this. Another game I found notable is Table Tanks. It really reminds me of the tank minigame from Wii Play. In this game, you play as a tank and you have to eliminate other tanks. And there's a total of 25 levels to complete, and 5 different tanks. Those being red tanks, purple tanks, black tanks, giant red tanks, and the final boss of the game. The red tanks are your go-to enemies. They shoot when they see you, and they're pretty easy to deal with on their own. The purple tanks are a bit more sporadic than their red counterparts. These guys shoot more often, and come off like a gamer that just took one too many Flintstones gummies. The black tanks shoot in a shotgun-like spread, and these guys are incredibly dangerous, even on their own. But if you're fighting them along with anything else, then things can really get complicated. Then there are the giant red tanks. These things are slower, stronger, and have more health than the smaller versions. You pretty much have to empty three whole mags into these things. It doesn't really help that they also have bouncing giant bullets, which are a bit scary. There are also abilities. Basically every couple levels you get the option to choose a new ability. These can range from bouncing bullets, to giant bullets, to double bullets, but there are also non-bullet based upgrades, like faster movement or laser sight. Every enemy in the game can instantly take you out with one shot, and, as I mentioned previously, they shoot you on sight. You can increase your protection by getting a bubble shield upgrade, but the enemies get this upgrade later on as well. The final boss in this game is a white tank. It's basically like if you took the giant red tanks, and then mixed them with the shotgun spread of the black tanks. The progression in this game works excellently, and I highly recommend going to check this game out. It only took me 20 minutes to get through the whole thing, but I can say with certainty that I enjoyed every second. So those those are just some of the games Cool Math Games has to offer. This is by no means a complete list, but I feel like my choices properly summed up some of the best things Cool Math Games has to offer. But how is it so easy for Cool Math Games to induce? I think a big reason Cool Math Games has the staying power to remain so nostalgic to so many people is that the games are truly timeless, including Run, Fireboy and Water Girl, World's Hardest Game, Duck Life 2048, and so many more. Each and every one of these games are super replayable, and they all work as both full gaming experiences as well as a good way to spend the last 10 minutes of class. But Cool Math Games still changes with time, for better or for worse, as nowadays you can barely even go on the site without seeing mobile games in the corner of your eye. The big lesson to be taken from Cool Math Games is this. 
If the games are timeless, then so is the platform, but you still need to evolve and change over time. Cool math games isn't as popular as it once was, but it's still able to keep its success over time, even after its competition has been long forgotten. Hey there, kids. Do you like this? Yeah, me neither. But if you're a psychopath, feel free to come over to the Discord server. It's it's really cool.